Right, this is a basic intro to how the editor works. Um, when you first boot up, you're going to be in this screen. This is the play mode. That's fairly straightforward. Just press any of those things to uh, play any of the four games. I'm not going to look into that one here. We're looking at the editor. So to change to the editor mode, you press this. Okay, now you're in editor mode. Now what these buttons do, there's export, which saves a copy of whatever game you, you press it on to the directory that's accessible from iTunes. There's import, which brings up a, a, a file requester and you can choose one to load in. There's name, which lets you name any of the levels. So if you wanted to rename this, for example, you just press that and it will generate a new mouse. New mouse? <laughs> a new name. And then if you press export, that will then get saved under that name. If you press import, you'll see the list of things. And there it is there. Just let's load it back in, not do anything. And then there's edit, which lets you basically edit any of these particular levels. So let's have a look at that. Press edit. That puts you into the level select screen. You can choose any of uh, 20 levels. You can have 20 levels per game. Some of these are empty. Within this, you've got, for example, there's a copy button here. So you can copy any of these levels. So if, if I wanted to copy this one, I could copy that. And then I can either paste that further on into this one, or I could even go to a different game. So here, and then just press paste, and it would put it in there. Okay, I'll go back to that other one. Okay, so now let's look at, so this is how you choose the levels, and then you just press... Oh, thank you. Get a Twitter notification, of course, when I'm trying to do this. Uh, go on, bugger off. Um, right, edit level. That puts us in edit mode. Now, this is fairly straightforward. Um, you can move around the screen by just dr dragging your finger anywhere. Like that. Uh, there are various different modes that the cursor can be in. Here we're in tile input mode, which lets us put in the various tiles that make platforms and walls and that kind of thing. So to make to add stuff, you just literally put your finger in the cursor and drag, and that will extend it. You notice that an undo button appears every time you, you make a modification. You've got an eight level undo that you can use. Um, there are various different kinds of tile. Uh, they're divided into subcategories. Within each category, basically if you scroll up and down here, if you just touch in this area and drag up or down, it will change the actual subtype within that, that type. So here we've got different kinds of grass. So I want to make a grass with say, a platform with grass on both sides. I'll just choose that one. And there you go, there's that. Um, and to change the type of tile, you just drag left or right down the bottom here. So if I go there, now I've got platforms. It's just lets me put in various different kinds of platform bases. Again, I can change the style of them here. There's an icy platform, for example. Some of them have, have two different uh, subtypes. You'll see there's a little division there. You'll see it more clearly in the actual editor. But where there's two different subtypes, you can just drag up here or you can drag up here. So here, for example, I've got the, this changes the actual type. And this side changes the colour. You can see there. So you can make platforms of different colours and that kind of stuff fairly easily. And there are solid blocks that can be used for walls or uh, non-penetrable ground. So there's bricks and things there. So if you want to make a wall, you can literally do that. If you do make a mistake, you can either undo the other way of, uh, of getting rid of stuff. You can you can pick up any any tile by just placing the cursor over it and then pressing two fingers down so if you do that you'll hear and now I've picked up an empty tile there so I can just use that to take out anything that I don't want to be there if I make a mistake again I can just pick up the brick and press that Pick up the empty one. So it's just a handy way of being able to get rid of stuff. Okay, let's get rid of that wall since I don't really need it. Okay, so there are various different types here. There are smashable blocks that can be used so the goat can smash through them to reach secret areas. 
there are hazards that the goat can can uh, can run into. So, for example, if I go up and down here, oops, I've got the softbox hazards. For example, with various different spikes. We've got spiky tree things that can be put in. So, um, um let's keep going. There are soft blocks that they're the kind of blocks like in Manic Miner that disintegrate when you stand on them. There are various different styles of those. And there are, of course, different colours of those as well. And there's melty blocks where once you've stood on one, the whole lot will melt away. Um, there's zone tiles. Zone tiles are interesting because zone tiles let you put in things like, for example, let's get a bit of wall. I'll make some wall here. We're going down, really. Go down. It's awkward when I kind of work around the camera. It's not that hard in real life, really. So I make this area here. Now I can fill that, for example. Oh, it's got a hole in the bottom. Go back to zone tiles. Here we are. So I've got. The darkness there, it's changed from darkness. Let's put in water. Now water will fill from one side to, to the other. Basically it fills in horizontal lines, so you can just drag down and it makes water. Okay. And then there's various zappers. You could put these in to create hazards. Horizontal ones, vertical ones, sort of thing. Uh, platforms, conveyor belts, so, yeah, it's just standard um, platform game fare, really. These are control blocks, you can use them as in invisible platforms. So, you could take these, for example, put them up there, and uh, if you put something on there, an enemy on there, it would stay on that platform, but those blocks wouldn't be visible during the actual game. Uh, you can also use them to define the out, outer boundaries of the scrolling area, as I have done here. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, let me go back to grass. Okay, so that's tile mode. Um, then you've got next mode is object mode, which works very much the same way, but instead of the tiles, you have the various objects for the game. So here's the goat. You can have one goat per level, obviously, because uh, that's, that's you. Then there's baby goats you can add in. These increase the bonus multiplier when you pick them up. Uh, baby goats can also be placed, or many, many of the other things have a sub option where you can actually place them upside down. So, And if you place things upside down, then the gravity is reversed, so they will fall upwards. Um, then there's collectible things. The, this is the primary collectible thing, the key. You need to. Uh, it shows up as a different thing in each level, but it's always like a flashing manic minor style thing. And you need to collect all those to get through the level. If I just quickly show you there, for example. This is this is just the, the play mode. Here you can test the level, you can name the level. It works the same as the naming in the um in the uh, title screen, so it names names the level here. Um Back takes you up, back up to the level select, undo speaks for itself, mode switches to the next mode. So if I press play now, then you see you can actually now test the level. I just there we go. Okay, I'm going to stop now and split this into two halves because this is coming up to eight, uh, eight minutes, or is it nine minutes now? Can we see that? Nine minutes. Okay, I'll stop this one now.